group stage alone. They nearly took down Cloud9 the first time, as you mentioned. They had two pretty decent early games against G2. And now here we are, both teams' final game at this year's Worlds. And it seems like from the bands already, it feels more like a serious game. The Yumi taken away. Cloud9 do not want to deal with that one once again. The Renekton and the Tristana Hong Kong Attitudes. First two bands, the Akali with the final one, taking something away from Niski. So nothing too out of the ordinary just yet. Looking at some of the champions that are up and available. Thinking about the Zaya is up, but with the Rakan taken off the board, that's likely going to drop down in priority. Taking their time here on this first pick. Maybe just going to be comfort. Obviously, final game on stage. No need to try something too crazy. Can just go for things that have worked for you in the past. Crash, obviously, very comfortable on the least in, so it will be the first pick lock in. And Dracos, you were mentioning while we were off camera, imagine you're in Licorice's shoes and you dominate the first week of World's group stage, and yep. then this next week you're put on Kale and Shen early game. Um, you would want to change that with how well he's been able to perform. So I'm looking as well to see if C9 can actually pick very aggressive top and mid lanes, have Blabber play through those lanes, and then even though definitely has the Kai'Sa, just let him scale up throughout the rest of the game. It's gonna be hard to be certain until we see the lock in there, but it will be a very powerful bot lane for the side of C9. We'll see if Licorice gets his choice of powerhouse champions there on the top side of the map for now. HKA need to respond. Will they just try to match on bot lane? Zaya, of course, is still up and available. Could also try to go for some mages themselves. Pretty much their yeah. kind of pick of the litter of bot lane picks outside of the Tristana. Ooh, we did see some jinx yesterday from Kobe. And, uh, well, I don't think it was the most dominant Whoa. pick. It was definitely interesting to watch, and they're going to be running it into the Kai'Sa. She does have a bit of a range advantage, and set up with something like a Thresh, she can land those traps pretty easily. Um, but I think that during the laning phase, you have to be very careful when playing up against the likes of a Nautilus especially. Yeah, I think if they end up locking in this Thresh, it will give the Jinx a little bit more safety. My personal opinion is that Zaya is the best AD carry to play against Cloud9, because when they win, it is by just mauling the AD carry of the other team in full dive team fights, and Zaya is good against that. Jinx, not so much. Of course, if it gets snowballing, maybe we can see the raw power of Jinx present itself, but difficult for Unified. Opting for comfort over what is considered meta Ooh. power, and the Echo now coming yeah. in. Obviously, this could go in either mid or jungle, but this is something that was really, really popular in solo queue. And when they fir when Cloud9 first subbed Blabber in, I thought it was to either play the Echo or the Nidalee because it's the two champions that he had been playing to most success and most in EUS solo queue. So we haven't seen many people play this. We saw it four times on the first day of Worlds playing, and it has been completely absent since then. But I think this will be Blabber trying to show up on Jungle Echo. And regardless of where it goes, if you want to dive the AD carry, as you mentioned, Jack, Echo is a perfect champion to do so as we approach the mid game. But for now, Cloud9 now focusing their bands on the top side of the map. Once again, trying to secure something comfortable for Licorice, taking the GP away from 3Z after a pretty monster early game up against Griffin uh, earlier in the day. So Cloud9 just taking away some of the safe, blind pickable top laners. It looks like that they do want to try and give Licorice some kind of a counter pick. Hong Kong Attitude right now have a relatively safe and open draft, but given their options, some of the only... I think they want to avoid picks like a Syndra, especially given that the Echo could potentially go into the mid lane, but also Echo is a very good pick into that. And you can see the Hong Kong Attitude are also banning away some of the comforts the Cloud9 often default to in the form of Irelia and the Kiana. Now they have the pick. Who are they actually going to save this last pick counter pick? Will they reveal where the Echo is going to go? Currently, expectation is jungle. Obviously, a lot can change depending on what the enemy team locks. And a Jax now can technically jungle. Jungle Jax hasn't really been hit super hard, but I expect it to go into Licorice on the top side of the map, and that is a spicy pick. Now fight top is what I want to <laughs> now see. That is the counter to Jax, I think I'm you're, telling you. You're falling into what I like to refer to as the do and be trap, where he <laughs> plays it, and you're then convinced it's a viable meta pick. No, I'm telling you, <laughs> Malphite top lane, really strong counter to Jax, my man. It's it's really strong as well, especially if you've got Iceborne corner. You have kill pressure in the laning phase. It is a really strong matchup. I don't know, Vetti. Every time you see a lock and you think, OK, knock, turn, mid, be good here. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be good here, by the way, but <laughs> against the rise, I mean, it would be a great mid laner. I mean, it could be, maybe, but we won't <laughs> dive into that. We won't dive into that. Uh, <laughs> something you brought up, Jack, yesterday was how with Vizichachi doing so well on champions like the Cho'Gath, yeah. it may increase the popularity of the pick. I, however, think Cho'Gath 
is not a good matchup into Jax whatsoever because I think that it is very difficult to stop Jax from literally just hitting you and clonking you with his lamp for as long as he wants. So I'm not a massive fan of the pick, and I think the Hong Kong attitude are going to have to find some big advantages in either mid or bot side of the Ooh. map if they want to come out on top. Oh, and I like that. If you got to go out, go out with style. Looks like Niski is going to take the Yasuo into the mid lane. Jax on the top side. Blabber with the Echo in the jungle. This is an explosive composition from the side of Cloud9. It feels like Hong Kong attitude just have to survive this one in the early to mid game. Well, the tricky thing is, if you get late game Yasuo Kaisa Jax, that's also a pretty strong split pushing composition. So I think it'll be potentially an explosive game. And we're also going to get to see our first group stage of, the, I think, the top Jax and the Jungle Echo. So C9's draft looks very much of what I would normally see in my solo queue draft, where you're like, okay, you have some AP damage, you have some AD damage, but then you have the two soul layers like, pick me this champ, I will win lane and win game. And you're just like, okay. And your duo bot lane is like, we should probably pick something safe and standard to make sure that if something goes wrong, we can be in insurance. And while I think that it definitely can work, this game is very much about the two soul laners for Cloud9. I mean, it's very volatile. Uh, uh, behind Yasuo is not a useful champion, but when, <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, Cloud9 want to go out, they want to go out in style, and you got to respect it. And of course, for Hong Kong Attitude, need to find that win. Do not want to be another team to end winless. And here we go, Hong Kong Attitude versus Cloud9. The last time we will see both of these teams on the world stage, pride on the line for both of these lineups. And no matter who you're here to cheer for today, never hurts to give a little, little bit of love So lineups playing. Before we dive into the game, Jack, very quickly, something that, from the perspective of many fans, will be very important is pickums. So, in the event that HKA win and tie the score, do you know yeah. what happens to pickums? More points for everyone. Really? Yeah. When there is a tie between 3-4, since they don't play a tiebreaker, anyone who put them in 3 or 4 will get the points for a correct pick. Oh, okay. So what you're saying is, if Cloud9 want to help out... <laughs> Oh, by the way, if that's wrong, I'm not going to be able to tell you that now. <laughs> check. Someone on Twitter will be like, that's yeah, You said it with so much confidence. I was, I was born. I was, I was like, like if wow. If anyone's going to know this is Jet. Yeah, this is sure. like, this has got to be a Jet fun <laughs> fact. Most certainly. Yeah. I think it's right. All right. So uh, if you did not watch Plants, we have seen a decent amount of Echo Jungle. Overall, it has felt like uh, a bit of a lackluster replacement for Elise with a very high theoretical output that has never really been reached. I mean, it's funny if you didn't watch Play-Ins Day 1 because that was the last <laughs> time we saw it. It got picked four times, lost either all four or three out of four of the games, and then was just dropped by absolutely everyone. But I've played a bit of Jungle Echo myself. I've watched a lot of Tracking the Pros where Jungle Echo was very prevalent, and I'm going to be interested to see if this game turns into more of a solo queue game because why I feel he Jungle Echo has been a good challenger elo pick but not necessarily a good pro pick is the amount of gold you can actually get on the jungle because I think one of his greatest strengths is his ability to gank lanes and then very quickly shove and steal stuff from his solo laners which is great for the greedy solo queue junglers that's not how pro teams function for the most part, but it might be how Cloud9 is able to function in this game if Blabber wants to play very greedy, very fast, and try and snowball ahead. And Blabber's been a guy so far in the tournament who has got a lot done in the early game, so I'm curious how aggressive, how, how greedy he is willing to play. For now, just clearing out his jungle. Obviously, first clear for Echo is a little bit rough. Obviously, it's very healthy, but will get much faster after that first back and extremely quick after he finishes the Runic Echoes, one of the fastest clears post that item. Yeah, that's exactly the thing with Echo is you also have to get a little bit of gold income early and then you can start trying to take over the game. But his level three with double buffs, actually very strong. So nice wraparound on this gank with mission. And has to sidestep on this one when Waldez come out, but Blabber does a lot of damage. He is not going to follow up the flash there, will not proc the Z-Drive resonance, and mission just going to be forced to flash away. But this means they actually have 
mid lane priority if he wants to try and go for the scuttle. The problem is Licorice just recalled. Now in the previous two games for C9, the C9 jungler died going for this scuttle crab. Third time's a charm. C9 can secure it. I think Everybody, so. will it happen? Will he secure it? it? And that's it. <laughs> now they win. That's that's been what means the winner loss for C9. The defining moment. There you go. Thank you, audience, for cheering for that one. Pack it up, boys. It's <laughs> over. That's There's it. No way HK <laughs> bounced back from this. <laughs> oh, good hook. Lantern's there. Defy just going to make his way out. And for now, Jinx able to sustain the pressure. A lot of just free attack speed with the minigun. So we've been speaking a lot about uh, the jungle echo, but we can see some of the value that this Jinx pick also has into a Kaisa. Because she can outrange her early and because of the base attack speed bonuses that she'll get from her Q, it actually allows her to push the wave pretty effectively. And as we just saw, the Lantern provides a lot of safety as well. So it's uh, very difficult, especially in early levels, for the Nautilus to all in. This means that you gain early prior, you have that pressure, and it gives the jungler the freedom to play towards the bot side of the map. Interesting as well. So we see yeah. the top side match. It feels like Licorice is surviving in these trades, but not necessarily coming out on top. Corrupting Potion will give him the sustain edge, but difficult to out-sustain a Choga. Yeah. I'm interested that Licorice took Kleptomancy and not Conqueror for extended fights later on in the laning phase against the Cho'Gath, because it definitely feels like the Cho'Gath wins extended trades thanks to multiple grass procs. I think one thing that is underrated about Kleptomancy is it's not all about the gold, it's sometimes about the consumable sustain and potions that you can get from it, but gonna be interesting to see if Licorice ends up actually falling fairly far behind in this lane, because 3Z has a good amount of pressure and also is very willing to trade. So I can also see how uh, for the Cho'Gath, um, in early levels, the extended fighting is probably not going to favor, as, as Jat was saying, just because of all that sustain that you have. And like the passive, by killing all those minions, you're able to just vamp it back up. And then the Jax finds himself with only half his HP, and he's like, well, if I commit to this trade again, I might die. Or the jungler might be there. So in a, in a drawn-out fight, uh, I'm actually quite surprised. In the early game, this is not what I was expecting to happen. So, uh, as you said, it could very much be a rune, or it could actually just be how the matchup plays out. Conqueror obviously changes a lot. The more drawn out of fight, the more value you get from Conqueror. The hook does land. Crash now coming in. That's going to be big. Zazel in trouble. Looks like First Blood will drop for HKA and Crash. And that was the Thresh Jinx combo. Landed hook straight into the Flame Chompers as Crash was there since Blabber had showed top on ward. Just a well done gank by HKA. Niski needs to land this one. He's going to get a chance to CC together. A perfect knock. Whoa. Oh, that was clean Yasuo mechanics. And that is the Echo Yasuo combo, the one that they set up <laughs> for in the mid lane, where because you're suspended in air for such a long time, it makes it easy for Echo to land his W, and then there's very little that the Rise can do. Yes, it does cost Niski both of his summoners, but the Yasuo and the Echo are able to find a kill for Cloud9. And I love the way he's willing to commit the flash there to find the knockup. Doesn't take the risk on the tornado, instead uses the, the Q2. Obviously, when paired with the sweeping blade along with the flash, just looks really solid for Niski. And this play, well executed by the side of HKA. Yep, two solid plays as we talked about right there, just kind of locking Zazel down, making sure he can't flash away. And back to the top side of the map where we wait slowly but surely for Licorice to scale up. The Kleptomancy hopefully will let him finish a first major item earlier, potentially the tipping point in this matchup, but 3Z making good use of that lane pressure to track Blabber. A lot of vision has been placed in that jungle by HKA thus far this game, and second Scuttle Crab spawn will go over to the side of Crash, so all things considered, very even map, but it does feel a little bit like HKA have found some decent advantages. I think all HKA is... Uh, really check the brush for the ward. You gotta, you gotta get in that habit. Don't give it away. If you cheer, you'll know, audience. Just shh. Happened to Sven Skarin 2 in the Gryphon game. There are actually two wards, and he just kind of ran right through the goalposts of control wards in his jungle. It only takes half a second, but definitely worth Mission. checking. Yeah, nope. Okay, that one's less excusable. <laughs> it's fine. You know what's happened there, right? He's looking at bot lane, and he's clicking his minimap, yeah. but not actually looking at his yep. screen. And the that's classic. Fine. It's almost as bad as like basing and then just sitting in the shop while you base. And then your screen's red and you're like, wait, what's happening? What? You're like, oh, I'm dead. <laughs> Where was my tea? <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I've got more time to shop. And Blabber clearing out what vision he can. Uh, of course, no jungle item completed. Not very easy for him to take the Drake. No real innate sustain in Echo's kit in the early jungle outside of that item. So see if he's more confident to take it. You can see definitely in Zayzel as they get closer to level 6, should feel more comfortable in this lane, but Crash kind of constantly hovering around the bot side and threatening some of these more aggressive ganks. 
Yeah, definitely showing everyone bot, so C9's got a bail. Coming. See if he can land the hook. Ooh. Nice sidestep there, coming in from Zazel, as well as Deathly. And overall, it feels like outside of that play mid and that play bottom, the game has slowed down a decent amount. Obviously, good vision for both sides means that it's a bit harder to make these uh, very aggressive, very proactive plays. I mean, HK probably feel very comfortable right now. They have advantages in both top and bot. Uh, mid is still relatively even, even though the Rise did die. His Flash is now back up. Uh, and with his ultimate available, he could also look for a roam towards the bot side of the map. I do like this vision that we're seeing in the bot side river from Cloud9. Um, but now that they know that Blabber is top side, this is where I'd want to see HK consider looking to move through towards the bot side of the map. Yeah, I'm looking at the gold though, and I can see that what C9 is setting up for. Blabber is the highest gold on C9, and also just completed his Runic Echoes right even with Niski. So he's kind of prioritizing topside rather than trying to make something happen bottom, right? They got control word vision in the Infernal Drake, and then instead of staying down there like you'd see most other pro junglers do, he just full cleared up all the way from his blue side to his red side jungle base to get items, and now he's coming bot to hopefully find a fight. And Niski now standing on a ward. So he won't find an opportunity to move in there, but have to respect the chain CC potential. Normally the Echo W is very unreliable to land, but between the Nautilus and the Yasuo, you could set that up perfectly to find one or two picks uh, at this stage of the game. Yeah, and where things are really going well for Hong Kong Attitude is the bottom lane Jinx. It's a 30 CS advantage, basically, Jinx over Kai'Sa, and it's where they're able to generate their kill. However, stepping forward. You only need three procs on the pass if you are going to chase, but I mean, you talked about it in Champ Select, Jet. Kind of how C9 are a team that is excellent at capitalizing on these uh, more vulnerable bot lanes. So TP is available on the Cho'Gath, and HK was in a position to go for this. The ward is right behind C9, so they could force this collapse. So now are they going to be able to steal it? No, the Echo does manage to take it away. The Nakam is there, and the Lee Sin instantly dies for trying to step to that pivot. Licorice is now TP'd in. Can just hop his way back out to safety. Not a fan of the execution here from HK. That ward right there next to Niski, that could have been the, the flank that uh, could have given HK the opportunity to get a big fight, especially with how strong the Jink is with already an early BF. But instead, they wait for the Lee Sin to go in first. And now Cloud9 have the advantage to dive this tower. Locked under tower will force Blabber's alt out. Mission surviving for now, but you can see Niski steadily building a CS advantage. Multiple plates now going in the favor of Cloud9 as well. They're going to be feeling pretty good about the state of the game, grabbing the Infernal, helping them scale up later, along with tying up the gold. Yeah. Always uh, beneficial for C9 when they can win the 50-50 on the Infernal Drake <laughs> with the early game uh, that also has Crash come in to get another kill over to Blabber. So Blabber really the main beneficiary of all the stuff that's happening in the early game. Still sitting at a very high gold total, keeping his farm up and looking to be that kind of solo queue-esque carry echo. And now I'm wondering if we see a similar setup around the Rift Herald. Vision has been placed down, but unfortunate timing means Crash can clear it out if he wants to. Is this the next big arena? Are HKA going to feel okay to fight? The Jinx does have the Infinity Edge completed versus just a Man Immune on the side of Deathly. Well, 3Z is bought without TP, so if Crash starts the Rift Herald and the I want to contest, they have to back away, which is what they're doing right now. Uh, I do find it quite funny that HK set up for these objectives and then just leave. Yeah. We saw it on the Drake where they had all this vision and then they like, nope, I'm gonna go clear my jungle camps. And then HK did exactly the same thing at this Rift Herald where they, they set up all this vision, allow C9 to walk in, clear it out. And you notice how C9 is staying in the river. So when HK tried to contest, they get collapsed on. That's gonna be a beautiful stun. They do manage to lock down the support. That's gonna be hurt. Kai Wing go locked kick. up, tries to buy, but the chain CC should come in. A perfect flash now takes him up, but the Jax is going to follow up. Licorice now could be in trouble. Keep drives on the Niski. three, unified. But right now, C9 are just dominating the fight. The Jinx needs to find a kill. Maybe if she can get one, they can start to turn this one back around. For now, it is advantage to C9. Blabber fearlessly leaping forward. Will be able to take the blast gun out. The Jinx has not gotten any resets. Definitely goes into the backside. That's a double kill for the Kaisa. First game on the world stage and picks up two. And that's some Blabber aggression right there. Just face checking in to get the two-man stun that starts that entire fight. And then Niski is the one who came in huge towards the backside of that fight to land a two-man ultimate. There is nothing more frustrating on a Jinx than seeing all these low health targets and not being able to execute any of them. TP, though, coming in. Are they going to try to fight this? It's getting lower and lower. Blabber doesn't even have smite. Not quite a 50-50. He's going to be in trouble. That's going to be the reset for the Jinx. Now she's getting excited. Wait a minute. She's going to dash forward. The wind wall is up and available. He's going to step back. The objective will go down in the favor of Cloud9. 
They've gotten the Herald. Niski now needs to run. There's no wind wall. This Yasuo is dead in the water. They just have to walk him down. The flash forward. Niski now back to the creep wave. Will not make it out. So C9 do walk away with the Rift Herald. They found a bunch of kills, but they couldn't quite escape with all of their members as the Jinx was able to pick up, at the very least, a kill alongside his teammates. And we were talking about this, how HK conceded all of their vision in the yep. river, and then they tried to face check where C9 were primed and ready. So HK kind of get caught off guard. They end up getting split up, and you can see how a beautiful ultimate from Niski allows yeah. C9 to split up the side of HK. Yeah, gotta credit Zazel for for getting the Nautilus R that allowed the suspension to kick in from Niski. And then really just tight fight down the end, definitely kind of dodging through both Unified and Kai Wing to pick up that double kill. And even though he ended up being down 40 CS in the early game, that double kill will definitely help speed up his items. And you have to feel for the Jinx, it's going to be really hard to play out these fights because every single champion on the enemy team outside of the Nautilus is incredibly mobile in fights. It's going to be hard to lock a single member down in the face of a wind wall, in the face of the reset from the Echo, the counter strike from the Jax, the mobility from the Kai'Sa. So Unified, a lot of pressure on his shoulders to find a way to make it work. It's definitely going to be tough. Harold now, channeled mid. Plates, of course, already down. So C9 just looking to break open mid lane tower. Gonna be important for a comp that could, in theory, 1-3-1. One, one. C9 wanted to go for it. Yeah, Focus on trying, the mid lane. Just trying to get this mid lane turret down, kind of break the map a little bit open, since the game is still very close. Just for the avenues back into the fight. HKA just grouping mid, just responding to C9's aggression. We'll just give up the mid lane tier one tower. Neither team with a massive gold lead quite yet. And two turret plates to three, not necessarily the explosive early game we might have expected. Well, I feel as though there weren't a uh, huge number of opportunities. HKA could have tried to force more plays towards the bot side of the map. However, one of the issues that they had was that Niski maintained control because of that early kill, forcing Mission to play more defensively. So this game has become a little bit more about scaling, and that's where I feel C9 are much more comfortable because, as we said, it's all about the two soul laners. And if you look at them, Trini Force is nearing completion, Niski now has his static shiv, and this split push composition that C9 has is only going to get stronger, which makes it harder for HKA to be able to deal with the sidelines. And of course, if you're Blabber, you have to feeling good, because you're talking about those first item completions, and he's well on his way to the second, and he's second in gold as well. But once yeah. he finishes that proto belt, mid-game Echo is one of the most difficult champions to fight uh, in the game, hands down, especially once he has the proto belt. It's so easy for him to get in, to get out. You really never get a chance to pick a fight on, on your terms if Blabber is playing well. And it's the type of thing you need to have Echo be successful. When we've seen Echo be a pro pick in the past, it's because he has good split push pressure, eventually farms up enough AP that he can just dive into the back of a fight and one shot an AD carry. And when we saw it on the first day of play-ins, they really just weren't giving enough gold to themselves. And this game, I feel like Blabber's actually struck a very good balance of not stealing too much from his soul inners while still finding a way to get his own gold. It ended up being leaving Deathly and Zazel just completely out to dry. They were getting ganked, they'd been getting killed, he gave them absolutely no cover. But that's the type of sacrifice that you actually kind of have to make if you're going to be playing Jungle Echo in pro. It's that. You know, meme where he looks at his bot lane and goes, look at me, I am the carry now. <laughs> He's like, definitely, by the way, first game on stage, I'm taking all the gold. Is that cool? <laughs> yeah. Nice, all right. Nice. It's, it's going to be fine. I've got 100% kill participation too, so if anything is happening, Blabber has been a part of it, so it yeah. feels natural that we kind of keep our eyes on the Echo as we move later in the so game. this Jogath is literally just looking at this, this samurai, just cut away at his tower, and he's like, there's nothing I can do. Yeah. I am countered by this sword man. It's because HKA has two people up top lane, Remember? so he was wondering what C9 was going to do with their play. Kai Wing pulls him right back in, but he's just going to snap right back out and definitely on a killing spree. That was an easy setup for Cloud9. Meanwhile, in the bot lane, Niski is taking another tower, and HKA are trading it towards the top side, as you were talking about, yeah. Jat. But uh, the fact that HKA lost that kill in mid definitely puts them as the loser in this trade. No, Mission Crash have to be careful, though. I don't think Blabber knows that they're here. Has thrown it behind him, though. Might be fishing. Bit of a stun. Uh, they're going to see the retreat there, and HKA will walk away. Blabber just clearing out some vision. Gotta say, it must be feeling pretty good for Deftly and Blabber right now to both be getting subbed in the game and have five of the team's six kills. Right here, Rise, Lee Sin, and Cho were all shown on the map, so C9 knew it would only be two people possible to hold that, and 
Blabber just goes in for the kill. Definitely a solid game overall from Blabber. Like you set it up beautifully, Jab, right from the beginning of the game where the expectations for this pick were that it would be a little bit more selfish in its approach, mm -hmm. where you focus more on getting yourself to the point at which you can be a carry. And now Blabber is ready and he's influencing uh He's putting his influence on the map with the gold lead that he has, and we saw that tower dive being... And uh, it's a lot of influence. Protobelt is a huge spike, Lichbane is another huge spike, and he already has the Sheen. So this Echo is incredibly powerful. You have to feel that at this stage of the game, he can 1v1 anyone on the map. He doesn't even have to be a jungler anymore if he doesn't want to be. He could just go side lane. And you want to talk about other item spikes. Trinity Force now done for the Jax as well. Uh, Infinity Edge nearing completion for Niski. The only bright side for HK is that Unified is very close to his second item. And once that is done, then HK can look to try and force a 5v5 fight, which is the best way for them to come back into the game. And I also have to say that C9's weakness with Blabber hasn't been early. It's been between 15 and 25 minutes. It's where they have looked a little bit lost on the overall map, and it's generally when Sven Skarin had been looking better. So this would also be the time where Blabber and C9 with Blabber would want to show a bit of growth in being able to actually take this 2,000 gold advantage and two drakes and turn it into a victory. There's four members of Cloud9, or rather uh, HKA on the bottom side. So Cloud9 do just walk up and take this tier two top side. They're just going to walk in to contest this inhibitor. Cho'Gath is the only one who's coming back. They Easy. can look to dive if they want to. Obviously a difficult target with the stopwatch up and available. Mission now stepping over. Cloud9 will not take the risk. They will pull back because Deathly and Zazel are pushing in the mid lane. And 3Z, not enough of a threat to stop them. Blabber just goes right back out. Now the stun is going to come down, will not connect. The knockup is there. Yasuo just going to look to extend it. The Cho'Gath getting cut down. Knockup coming back though. Crash maybe can look to get out of this one. 3Z continuing to step forward. A bold gambit. The kick does connect. Oh. Blabber's already used the ultimate, but the res our Z Drive Resonance will zoom him out to safety. Wow. So Cloud9 actually convert that. Oh! 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 Nice snipe there from Unified. It if this was an NFL game, we would have been like, that's the greatest catch of all time. Sadly, it's League of Legends. <laughs> that was that was clean from Unified. And that is such a big kill to fly over to Hong Kong Attitude because they want to have these set-up team fights with the hyper carry Jinx in the back. That means Are Jinx they will be closer to Baron. Bloodthirster, to GA. They're and it means he's they dead for down. 10 seconds. And remember, it's 200 they have the to 174 in the farm category. The Jinx is, is doing incredibly well this game. This is the sole carry of HKA at this moment. And they're shredding through this. Zazel's not even there. They don't even have knockup set up for Niski. They have to go right now. Lakers would have to jump in. Blabber is dead. They're That's giving gonna it up. be it. Hong Kong attitude getting the Baron right when it feels like C9 have a death grip on the game. They're right back in it. And we talked about how unified was the win condition, but none of us were expecting him to be the win condition in that capacity. Hmm. Finding a pick onto the enemy jungler and then converting that into a Baron to close the gold gap and allow HK more time to stall. Get the items needed to allow this Jinx to be the big carry and turn the game around for HK. And when we talk about teams like needing a miracle to come back in a game, this might not be a great example of needing a miracle, but that was a miracle. Because any other situation, you weren't going to kill Blabber. He got out of the play. So yeah. finding that kill in that moment when your team is already set up to do Baron is incredible for HKA. And then on top of that, they caught Zazel on a reset. If Nautilus is there as well at the Baron Pit and can just press R on someone, that's easily enough threat to take a team off a 20-minute Baron yeah, because 100%. the Yasuo would be able to combo with anything they threw. So yep. really just smart play by HKA to be at that deficit but understand that that one kill onto Echo could potentially mean so much. This now frees HK up to group in the mid lane if they want to. The Cho'Gath no longer has to worry about being aggressive, can just focus on protecting the Jinx and the fights to come. But Niski starting to fish for a play. The knockup will not connect. The Jinx is uncontested on the opposite side of the wall, though. She's going to be free hitting on the front line of C9. What? A lot of strong members. Can they find it? Unify continuing to fight. The Lee Sin now goes in. Niski steadily stepping backwards. Licorice can't even find the flank. Zazel is now in trouble. Jinx is getting excited, and for good reason. Niski has to run for the hill. The wind wall is it going to save him. He's ticking. He's burning. He's not going to drop in the end. And HKA take the fight. That was a big team fight win for HKA, and C9 just looked very disorganized. Licorice was trying to recall teleport. Wasn't actually in base by the time he started channeling this teleport, so he never bought with his 1,700 gold before that fight. HKA also won it in the process and now can push through with this Baron. And you spoke about how between the 15 and 25 minute mark is where Blabber often struggles and C9 often struggles with him in the roster. And we see it here. Cloud9 trying to force this fight when they just don't need to. You just have to wait the Baron out. Avoid 5v5 fights against this HKA roster because that 
that is exactly what they want. We've been talking about this whole game, about Unified is the win condition for HKA. And as you identified in the fight, Draco, he was just sitting back behind the wall, free hitting whoever he wanted. Like, there is no threat onto Unified right now, and there is nothing he needs to be worried about. Yeah, and Blabber ends up being focused, can't all back out of the fight. And since they didn't have the initiation on a squishy member, and instead they had to go through this big Cho'Gath, they just can't win a front-to-back team fight, especially when their Jax isn't in the fight. And of course, you always have to give C9 the credit. If they do find an Echo Stun onto the Jinx, she'll probably get one shot. There's a lot of damage, there's a lot of good follow-up on the C9 lineup, but if you miss that shot, if you go in and you take that risk and you fail to kill the Jinx, your entire team is probably going to get wiped. So a lot of pressure now on C9 to play incredibly clean throughout the rest of the game. The bright side for C9 is that the Baron will be wearing off in about 10 seconds. But for HK, the best thing they can do is wait. They just want to wait for the next Baron to spawn. They know that at this point in the game, C9 is not going to try and force a fight. And it's going to take time for C9 to reclaim a lot of the map control that they have lost. In that time, HK should be setting up and getting ready for the Baron to force another big fight around that objective. Because if they get another 5v5, HKA can make the comeback a reality and turn this into a big win. Yeah, keep in mind, Hong Kong Attitude looking to pick up their first win of the World Championship group stage here. Crash gets the pick. Here's the LMS representative. Zane's going to get taken out. A perfect start to the fight for the Jinx. Jack's blocking what he can with the Counter-Strike. The Liquor is still getting poked out here, the red buff. Stop doing much more. The tower will break. That should be the inhibitor as well. HKA barreling down the mid lane. Don't even need the Baron buff. A single pick is more than enough for them to break open the base. I mean, you mentioned it, Dracos. Baron buff. Nah. Just group up mid. Run it down. Right, just glory Cho'Gath. What more could you need? They find a successful pick onto Zazel and they convert it into an inhibitor. They have top pushing. They have bot pushing. You can see pings coming down and they have their eyes set on another inhibitor. Moving up to the top side, and the thing is, it doesn't get easier here from Cloud9. The gold deficit, not massive, but the Jinx is only getting stronger. And in a minute and 30 seconds, if HKA try to force, they have the Cho'Gath. It is not a 50-50 with this champion in the game. Yeah, and the only thing that C9 kind of has going for him here is the fact that Licorice has pushed out this bottom side, and they have a control word on the Dragon. So I think it's extremely important for C9 with this second Infernal that they can be there first and find some type of flank. If they can get behind the rest of Hong Kong Attitude, because as we've seen in a front-to-back team fight, the Jinx Cho'Gath is just going to destroy the team of three melee champions and a Kai'Sa. So C9 played a lot of compositions similar to this throughout the regular season. We'll have to see if they can find a flank against Hong Kong Attitude. And in theory, they have tools to mitigate what the Jinx wants to do. They have the wind wall. They have the counter-strike. Echo has the reset. We said it before, but have to execute, have to find a way to get on top of that champion. And can't afford to lose a single member at the start of the fight and give her all that additional movement speed to just run in and out. So it's like Death Brush. Gonna be the partial setup here for C9, hoping to catch someone from HKA out. Dragon is about to respawn. Baron 26 seconds away. That's an important break as well. C9, they can't afford to give this one away, especially given that the Jinx has now hit three items, which means we're probably going to see another fight. And for C9 to be able to you know, reclaim the advantage that they had initially. Whoa. They want to try and force a pick now. Remember poking? Choke isn't there yet. They get forced into a choke either side, and whether the Echo Stun or the Cho'Gath Rupture connects, it could be a disaster. So it's interesting because Baron's up as well right now. They didn't immediately ah. go for the Drake, but right now it would be set up in front to back. C9 has no flank position, which I think means HKA can just get mid priority. Is there. Stun potentially from Blabber on the side. No one's going to get locked up. He will get hooked, however. That's going to be big. It's going to force the alt out. At least the Zanya's for now. The knockup is there. They're looking for Unified on the backside, but he also has a stopwatch of his own. Unified now needs to make it out safety. The melee champion's finally going to look to get on top of the Jinx, but still unhit. That's going to be it. Cloud9 suddenly winning the fight. The orb walking is not enough. The shutdown is there, and Cloud9 just turn it around. Or you just face plant into five and get a clean ace. How did that happen by C9? Blabber was able to tank so much aggro, and that bought time for Licorice and Niski to flank around. Guys, this could be game. Cloud9 are just barreling down the mid lane. They have the creep wave behind them. They just need to make sure that someone is tanking so the creeps do not die. And that's going to be it. I can't believe it. HKA seems set to take the game, but in a monumental team fight, Cloud9 will close out their world's run at 2 and 4. And hopefully it can put a smile on their face. It's a happy game and a happy close. You can see smiles all around for Cloud9. A little bit of happiness 
after a disappointing world's run. Blabber subs back in, also gets his win against Hong Kong Attitude as Sven Skarin did. And for Deathly, he's able to pick up his first win on the world stage. The odds were against Cloud9 at the beginning of the tournament. Expectations were that maybe, maybe they could find an upset against a, an unknown Griffin. But especially coming into week two, we saw the potential of this team and what kind of a mountain that Cloud9 had to overcome. They definitely had some up and down performances, but I think that they definitely they made some waves at this year's World Championship, and finding a big final win to end two and four is something they can at least be pleased with. And you gotta feel good for Deathly. You see the smiles, yeah. you see the jitters. First win on the world stage. I mean, give it up for this man. Plays the final game. You know, doesn't get to come in and be the savior, but he does get to make his mark on the tournament, and that's a, that's a good look. Just gets camped by Lee Sed and Thresh for the <laughs> whole game. And then uh, gets to dive in at the end of team fight and grab a couple kills, so. Yeah, and on the side of Hong Kong Attitude, this also marks the end of their world's journey. And it feels strange to say, but of the 06 groups we've seen, this was one of the better performances because there were almost every game where they were competing